Hey, I, I was just uh, thinking, you know, China has now got the number one electric car company in the world. They are going to build tons and tons of renewables. Um, Inflation Reduction Act has been passed. And it looks like, you know, I'm super optimistic. Technology is crushing, right? The price of lithium continues to drop. The price of batteries drops, solar drops. Um, they now make electric semis. You know, it's just getting better and better and better. And, and so I'm super optimistic we're going to win. And I, I'm just worried all Republicans are going to do or show up after the party's over and say, oh, yeah, we're on board, too. Yet we fought it every step of the way. And and, you know, essentially are not going to make any contribution. We're just going to pretend we were for it, even though at this point, I'm, I almost think it's inevitable, but not because of anything we've done, only because, you know, the, the, the technology people did it and, and the Democrats did it. Um, what do you think I'm, you know, being too pessimistic on, uh, for us Republicans or what do you think? Well, Joe, first, I agree with your optimism about uh, about the technological changes because they are dramatic. I was just uh, uh, the Economist this week has some uh, really interesting stuff on um, additional technologies that uh, you didn't mention just there, like these uh, bricks in a box thing where you can store enormous amounts of industrial heat, essentially, in some pretty creative ways and then release it when needed. Wow. And then the use of heat pumps in industrial facilities, um, that's coming on. You know, if I were if I were on the board of ExxonMobil, uh, I'd, I'd be ringing the alarm bell every time we got together as a board about how you, you see this technology. I mean, it's coming. And of course, The Economist makes its constant point. If you had a carbon tax, it would come even faster. Um, and so so I, I agree with you that uh, I agree with your optimism about um, about uh, the, the pace of technological change. It's pretty exciting. Uh, the key is to get the economics right, and that would really mostly be helped by a price on carbon dioxide, because that price on carbon dioxide is technology neutral. It doesn't have the government putting its thumbs on the scales favoring one technology over another. It just says, listen, accountability for emissions across the board now compete. And so, and as to your pessimism perhaps about uh, Republicans joining. Well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I just referenced that historical example of uh, uh, Charles Lindbergh and the Earth for, uh, and the uh, America Firsters uh, back in 1941. You know, they disbanded on uh, December 8th, 1941, uh, surrendered the charter uh, to uh, that organization called America First, because of course, what happened on December 7th, 1941 at Pearl Harbor. And so uh, people come around um, and uh, people came around quickly in the United States um, when uh, Pearl Harbor happened, you know, um, uh, before that it had been, well, maybe we can keep it over there in Europe and, and uh, he'll be over there, we'll, we'll be over here safe from the oceans. And then there came the reality, no, no, you can get hit here too. Um, and so, so I, I think when people come around, we've got to welcome them coming around. Um, and of course, I'm sort of the commercial for that, right? Uh, Price sort of indicated their English 2.0, you know, that's the new and improved version. That was the second six years in Congress when I was acknowledging climate change and working on it. First six years, I said it was nonsense. I, I just, all I knew was Al Gore was for it and I was against it. Pretty ignorant, but that's the way it was. So we got to allow people to come around. And, uh, um, and we certainly do want to signal that to all conservatives is, hey, it's okay, you can be wrong before and you can come around.